The history of military of the Ottoman Empire can be divided in five main periods. The foundation era covers the years between 1300, Byzantine expedition, and 1453, fall of Constantinople. The classical period covers the years between 1451, enthronement of Sultan Mem II, and 1606, peace of Sitvatrok. The Reformation period covers the years between 1606 and 1826, Vaka I The Modernization period covers the years between 1826 and 1858 and Decline period covers the years between 1861, Enthronement of Sultan Abdulaziz, and 1918, Armistice of Mudros. The earliest form of the Ottoman military was an step nomadic cavalry force. This was centralized by Osman I from Turkoman tribesmen inhabiting western Anatolia in the late 13th century. These horsemen became an irregular force of raiders used as storm troops, armed with simple weapons like bows and spears. They were given fiefs called Tamars in the conquered lands, and were later called Demariots. In addition they acquired wealth during campaigns. Orhanai organized a standing army paid by salary rather than booty or fiefs. The infantry were called Yairs and the cavalry was known as Muselims. The force was made up by foreign mercenaries for the most part, and only a few Turks were content to accept salaries in place of Demars. Foreign mercenaries were not required to convert to Islam as long as they obeyed their Ottoman commanders. The Ottomans began using guns sometime between 1444 and 1448. Following that, other troop types began to appear, such as the regular rifle infantry, Pied Topsu, literally foot artillery, regular cavalry armed with rifles, Shivari Topsu Neferi, literally mounted artillery soldier, and bombardiers, Humbarak, consisting of grenadiers who threw explosives called Kumbara and the soldiers who served the artillery with maintenance and powder supplies. This regular army was commanded and paid by some important landholders who gained power and became a sort of noble class. The mercenaries became a tool for their rise to predominance over the Sultan who simply could not afford to hire so many mercenaries that they would outnumber his nobles. Therefore, in the middle of the 14th century, Moradi built his own personal slave army called the Kapikalu. The new force was based on the Sultan's right to a fifth of the war booty, which he interpreted to include captives taken in battle. The captive slaves were converted to Islam and trained in the Sultan's personal service. The most famous branch of the Kapikalu was the Janissary Corps who were recruited among young Christian boys by the Def Zerm tax, but there were also several other troops types such as the Halbadia Corps, Baltak. Their numbers increased rapidly and this force became the most important element of the Ottoman army. In order to man the force, Morad II developed the Def Zerm system of recruiting youths in the form of taxes from Christians in the empire. Morad used the strength of the Capiculus and played them off against the nobility, forcing them to pay taxes or land so that the treasury could obtain the money it needed to maintain the Capiculu army. The Janissaries comprised infantry units that formed the Ottoman Sultan's household troops and bodyguard. The force originated in the 14th century. It was abolished by Sultan Mehmed II in 1826. The first Janissary units comprised war captives and slaves. After the 1380s Sultan Mehmed I filled their ranks with the results of taxation in human form called Def Shirme. The Sultan's men conscripted a number of non-Muslim, usually Christian, boys, at first at random, later, by strict selection, to be trained. Initially they favored Greeks, Albanians, who also supplied many gendarmes, usually selecting about one in five boys of ages 7 to 14 but the numbers could be changed to correspond with the need for soldiers. Next the Def Sherma was extended to also include Serbs, Bosnians and other Balkan countries, later especially Ukraine and southern Russia. The Janissaries started accepting enrollment from outside the Def Sherma system first during the reign of Sultan Morad III. 1546 to 1595, and completely stopped enrolling Def Sherm in 17th century. After this period, volunteers were enrolled. For all practical purposes, Janissaries belonged to the Sultan, carrying the title Kapikalu, gate slave, indicating their collective bond with the Sultan. Janissaries were taught to consider the corps as their home and family, 
and the Sultan as their de facto father. Only those who proved strong enough earned the rank of true Janissary at the age of 24 or 25. The regiment inherited the property of dead Janissaries, thus amassing wealth, like religious orders and foundations enjoying the dead hand. Citation needed. The Janissary Corps was significant in a number of ways. The Janissaries wore uniforms, were paid in cash as regular soldiers, and marched to distinctive music, the matter, similar to a modern marching band. All of these features set the Janissaries apart from most soldiers of the time. The Ottomans were one of the first states to maintain a standing army in Europe since the Roman Empire. The Janissaries have been likened to the Roman Praetorian Guard and they had no equivalent in the Christian armies of the time where the feudal lords raised troops during wartime. A Janissary regiment was effectively the soldier's family. They lived in their barracks and served as policemen and firefighters during peacetime. The Janissary Corps was also distinctive in the regular payment of a cashed salary to the troops, and differed from the contemporary practice of paying troops only during wartime. The Janissaries were paid quarterly and the Sultan himself, after authorizing the payment of the salaries, dressed as a Janissary visited the barracks and received his salary as a regular trooper of the 1st Division. The Janissary force became particularly significant when the foot soldier carrying firearms proved more effective than the cavalry equipped with sword and spear. Janissaries adopted firearms very early, starting in 15th century. By the 16th century, the main weapon of the Janissary was the musket. Janissaries also made extensive use of early grenades and hand cannon. The auxiliary support system of the Janissaries also set them apart from their contemporaries. The Janissaries waged war as one part of a well-organized military machine. The Ottoman army had a corps to prepare the road, a corps to pitch the tents ahead, a corps to bake the bread. The Serbesi corps carried and distributed weapons and ammunition. The Janissary corps had its own internal medical auxiliaries. Muslim and Jewish surgeons who would travel with the corps during campaigns and had organized methods of moving the wounded and the sick to traveling hospitals behind the lines. These differences, along with a war record that was impressive, made the Janissaries into a subject of interest and study by foreigners in their own time. Although eventually the concept of the modern army incorporated and surpassed most of the distinctions of the Janissary, and the Ottoman Empire dissolved the Janissary Corps. The image of the Janissary has remained as one of the symbols of the Ottomans in the Western psyche. The Household Cavalry, Kap Kalushu Ver al Ryokag, literally the hearth of the Household Cavalrymen of Gate Slaves. An important part of the Ottoman warfare was also the six divisions of cavalry, Altpaluk, a mounted elite force. The most important of these divisions was the Sapiers, a force of professional raiders called the Anks pillaged enemy territory ahead of the regular army. They also served as scouts. The Sapahis were originally founded during the reign of Morad I. Although the Sapahis were originally recruited, like the Janissaries, using the Defshirmer system, by the time of Sultan Mem II, their ranks were only chosen from among the ethnic Turks who owned land within imperial borders. The Sapai eventually became the largest of the six divisions of the Ottoman cavalry, and were the mounted counterpart to the Janissaries, who fought on foot. The duties of the Sapahis included riding with the Sultan on parades and as a mounted bodyguard. The Sapahis' status resembled that of the knights of medieval Europe. The Sapai was the holder of a fief of land, Tamar, hence the alternative name Tamar Sapai, granted directly by the Ottoman Sultan and was entitled to all the income from that land. In return for military service, the peasants on the land were subsequently attached thereto. A tamar was the smallest unit of land owned by a sipai, providing a yearly revenue of no more than 10,000 acts, which was between two and four times what a teacher earned. As I am it was a larger unit of land, yielding up to 100,000 acts, and was owned by sipahis of officer rank. Ahas was the largest unit of land giving revenues of more than 100,000 acts, and was only held by the highest-ranking members of the military. A Tamar Sipai was obliged to provide the army with up to five soldiers, a Zayamit Sipai with up to twenty, and a Has Sipai with far more than twenty. In times of peace, they were also responsible for the collection of taxes. The Sipahis, however, should not be confused with the Tamariats who were irregular cavalry organized along feudal lines and known as Sipai-s colloquially. In fact, 
The two formations had very little in common, apart from the Janissaries. In 1389 the Ottoman army introduced a system of conscription, when needed, every town and village were obliged to provide a fully equipped conscripted the recruiting office created by the order of the Sultan. This new force of irregular infantrymen was called the Azabs and they were used in many ways, to build roads and bridges for the army, to support the supplies for the front line and sometimes they were even used as cannon fodder to slow down enemy advance. The Bazbozyuk, who are also called Dilibas, Crazy Head, were a branch of the Azabs and were especially recruited among the homeless and criminals. They were fierce, undisciplined, and specialized in close combat. Other divisions of the Ottoman army were, a typical Ottoman army in 17th century might be composed of 50,000 Tamariots and 20,000 Kapikalu. The Ottoman military was modest for an empire whose population probably exceeded 20 million by the end of the 17th century. The Ottoman armies were not distinguished from their contemporaries in the West by numerical predominance of its military forces but by the thoroughness of the administrative backup and general support that maintained them in the field. The Ottomans increased the use of Sekban, temporary infantry recruits, soldiers in the 17th century. They had a wartime strength of between 4,000 and 10,000 men. Ottoman military bands are thought to be the oldest variety of military marching band in the world, though they are often known by the Persian derived word meta, comma in the West. That word, properly speaking, refers only to a single musician in the band. Sultan Selim III formed the Nizam Sadid army. Nizam Siddid meaning New Order, in the late 18th century and early 19th century. This was the first serious attempt to transform the Ottoman military forces into a modern army. However, the Nizam Siddid was short-lived, dissolving after the abdication of Selim III in 1807. Sultan Mahmud II, Selim III's successor and nephew, who was a great reformer, disbanded the Janissaries in 1826 with so-called known as Vakahe Rai, the good incident, and formed the Asaik Irai Manshrai Muhammadiyya as a contemporary modern army. The conquest of Imril Island in the Sea of Marmara in 1308 marked the first Ottoman naval victory. In 1321 the Ottoman fleet made its first landings on Thrace in southeastern Europe and vastly contributed to the expansion of the empire's territories on the European continent. The Ottoman navy was one of the first to use cannons, and the Battle of Sonchio in 1499 went down in history as the first naval battle where cannons were used on ships. It was also the Ottoman navy which initiated the conquest of North Africa, with the addition of Algeria and Egypt to the Ottoman Empire in 1517. The Battle of Preveza in 1538 and the Battle of Juba in 1560 marked the apex of Ottoman naval domination in the Mediterranean Sea. The Ottomans also confronted the Portuguese forces based in Goa at the Indian Ocean in numerous battles between 1538 and 1566. In 1553, the Ottoman admiral Salah Reis conquered Morocco and the lands of North Africa beyond the Strait of Gibraltar, extending Ottoman territory into the Atlantic Ocean citation needed. In 1566 the Sultan of Es asked for support against the Portuguese and declared allegiance to the Ottoman Empire, which sent its Indian Ocean fleet under Curtigo HZ Reis to Sumatra. The fleet landed at Essa in 1569 and the event marked the easternmost Ottoman territorial expansion. In 1585 the Ottoman Admiral Murat Reis captured lands Rotti of the Canary Islands. In 1617 the Ottoman fleet captured Madeira 9, in the Atlantic Ocean, before aiding Sussex, Plymouth, Devon, Hartland Point, Cornwall and the other counties of Western England in August 1625. In 1627 Ottoman naval ships accompanied by corsairs from the Barbary coast, raided the Shetland Islands, Faroe Islands, Denmark, Norway and Iceland. 9. Between 1627 and 1631 the same Ottoman force also raided the coasts of Ireland and Sweden. In 1627 a force of ships under the Ottoman flag captured the Isle of Lundy in the Bristol Channel which served as the main base for Ottoman naval and privateering operations in the North Atlantic until 1632. Ottoman ships later appeared off the eastern coasts of North America, 
particularly being cited at the British colonies like Newfoundland and Virginia. The overseas territorial acquisitions of the Ottoman navy further expanded the extent of the Ottoman sphere of influence on distant lands in both the Indian and Atlantic Oceans, such as the addition of Essay, 1569, as a vassal state to the Ottoman Empire, and temporary occupations like those of Lands Roti, 1585, Madeira, 1617, Vest Manager, 1627, and Lundy, 1627 1632. Following defeat against the combined British French Russian navies at the Battle of Navarino in 1827, and the subsequent loss of Algeria, 1830, and Greece, 1832, Ottoman naval power and control over the empire's distant overseas territories declined. Sultan Abdulaziz, reigned 1861-1876, attempted to re-establish a strong Ottoman navy, building the world's third largest fleet in that period after those of Britain and France, with 21 battleships and 173 other types of warships. The shipyard at Barrow. United Kingdom built its first submarine in 1886 for the Ottoman Empire. The submarine Abdul Hamid achieved fame as the world's first to fire a torpedo underwater. But the collapsing Ottoman economy could not sustain the fleet strength. Sultan Abdul Hamid II, reigned 1876-1908, distrusted the navy, when the admirals supported the reformist Matt Pasha and the first Ottoman parliament of 1876, claiming that the large and expensive navy was of no use against the Russians during the Russo-Turkish War. He locked most of the fleet inside the Golden Horn, where the ships decayed for the next 30 years. Following the Young Turk Revolution in 1908, the Committee of Union and Progress which effectively took control of the country sought to develop a strong Ottoman naval force. The poor condition of the fleet was highlighted during the Ottoman Naval Parade of 1910, and as a consequence the Ottoman Navy Foundation was established in order to purchase new ships through public donations. Those who made donations received different types of medals according to the size of their contributions. With this public money, the Ottoman government purchased large battleships from the United Kingdom, naming them Sultan Osman and Risa Dai. However despite the payment for both ships, the United Kingdom confiscated them at the outbreak of World War I and renamed them as HMS Agincourt and HMS Erin. The battleships had cost £4 million but the British government refused to refund the payments. This caused some ill feeling towards Britain among the Ottoman public and the German Empire took advantage of the situation by sending the battle cruiser SMS Goban and light cruiser SMS Breslau our which entered service in the Ottoman fleet as Yevutes Sultan Selim and the Middle respectively. Prior to the confiscation of the battleships, the Ottoman public opinion was largely divided between the pro-Britain stance of the Ottoman navy and the pro-Germany stance of the Ottoman army. This event significantly contributed to the decision to support and side with Germany in the First World War. The mine layer Newsrat, Newsrat, and the frigate Hamid I.A., commanding officer, Raw 4 Bay, are two of the more famous ships of Ottoman navy in the period of Balkan Wars and World War I. In the Gallipoli campaign of the First World War, the newsrit, commanded by Lieutenant Tofain Lihaki, Gavirti Kaidemli Yazbasi Tofain Lai Ibrahim Moglahaki, laid 26 mines in the Dardanelles Strait. These mines led to the sinking of the British prey dreadnought battleships HMS Irresistible and HMS Ocean and the French battleship Bouvet and badly damaging the British battle cruiser HMS Inflexible. The first aircraft carrier sunk in the world was the seaplane carrier HMS Ben Mikri. She was sunk on the 11th of January 1917 by shore-based Turkish artillery fire commanded by Mustafa Atugrul. Agas were commanders of the different branches of the military services, like Azapaga, Basliaga, Janissariaga, for the commanders of Azaps, Baslis, and Janissaries respectively. This designation was given to commanders of smaller military units, too, for instance the Blukaga, and the Okakaga, the commanders of a Bluk, company, and an Okak, troops, respectively. Blukbashi was a commander of a Bluk, equivalent with the rank of captain. Sorbak, Turkish for soup server, 
was a commander of an Orta regiment, approximately corresponding to the rank of Colonel Turkish Albay. Today, in seafaring, the term was in use for the boss of a ship's crew, a role similar to that of bosun. In 1389 a system of conscription was introduced in the Ottoman military. In times of need every town, quarter, and village should present a fully equipped conscript at the recruiting office. The new force of irregular infantrymen was called Azabs and it was used in a number of different ways. They supported the supplies to the front line. They dug roads and built bridges. On rare occasions they were used as cannon fodder to slow down enemy advance. A branch of the Azabs were the Bashi Bazk, Bazbozyuk. These were specialized in close combat and were sometimes mounted. They became notorious for being brutal and indisciplined and were recruited from homeless, vagrants and criminals. Number his nobles. Therefore, in the middle of the 14th century, Moradi built his own personal slave army called the Kapikalu. The new force was based on the Sultan's right to a fifth of the war booty, which he interpreted to include captives taken in battle. The captive slaves were converted to Islam and trained in the Sultan's personal service. The most famous branch of the Kapikalu was the Janissary Corps who were recruited among young Christian boys by the Def Zerm tax, but there were also several other troops types such as the Halbadia Corps. Baltac. Their numbers increased rapidly and this forceful infantry, Piaid Topsu, literally foot artillery, regular cavalry armed with rifles, Shuvari Topsu Neferi, literally mounted artillery soldier, and Bombardiers, Humbarak, consisting of grenadiers who threw explosives called Kumbara and the soldiers who served the artillery with maintenance and powder supplies. This regular army was commanded and paid by some important landholders who gained power and became a sort of noble class. The mercenaries became a tool for their rise to predominance over the Sultan, who simply could not afford to hire so many mercenaries that they would outnumber. In addition they acquired wealth during campaigns. Or Hanai organized a standing army paid by salary rather than booty or fiefs. The infantry were called Yaiyas and the cavalry was known as Muselims. The force was made up by foreign mercenaries for the most part, and only a few Turks were content to accept salaries in place of Demars. Foreign mercenaries were not required to convert to Islam as long as they obeyed their Ottoman commanders. The Ottomans began using guns sometime between 1444 and 1448. Following that, other troop types began to appear, such as the regular Rife 1826 and 1858 and decline period covers the years between 1861, enthronement of Sultan Abdulaziz and 1918, Armistice of Mudros. The earliest form of the Ottoman military was an steppe nomadic cavalry force. This was centralized by Osman I from Turkoman tribesmen inhabiting western Anatolia in the late 13th century. These horsemen became an irregular force of raiders used as storm troops, armed with simple weapons like bows and spears. They were given fiefs called Tamars in the conquered lands and were later called Demariots. The history of military of the Ottoman Empire can be divided in five main periods. The Foundation Era covers the years between 1300, Byzantine Expedition, and 1453, Fall of Constantinople. The Classical Period covers the years between 1451, Enthronement of Sultan Mem II, and 1606, Peace of Sitvatrok. The Reformation period covers the years between 1606 and 1826. Vaka i Hei Rai I, the modernization period covers the years between 